Isang mapagpalang araw po. Kumusta po mga kamatinik? Welcome to our new episode. This is quarter 4, week number 5. And today's episode, we will be having the lesson all about the line graph. But before that, I will present first the answer key from the previous episode natin, quarter 4, week number 4. Please check now your answers. Here is the answer key for quarter four week number four. Math try nga! Number one, the answer is letter C. Number two, the answer is letter B. Number three, the answer is letter C. Number four, the answer is letter B. And number five, the answer is letter C. Ayan, congratulations to those who got a perfect score. Kaya naman, abangan natin mamaya kung sino ang ating top 5 na sobrang bibilis talaga na sumagot. No? Siguro nag-aabang, ano? pero dapat uh, hinay-hinay lang. Ano? At tingnan natin kung sino yung mga nakakuha ng pinakamabibilis, pinakamababangis, at pinakamatinik na mga mathinics of the week. Ayan, kung gusto nyo rin maging mathinic of the week, sagutin nyo lamang ang ating math try nga. Pero dapat isang beses lang, bawal ang edited. Okay? Kaya dapat bago mag-post, siguraduhin yun na ang iyong final answer. Pero dapat, syempre, kailangan tumutok muna para makuha nyo kung ano ang mga tamang sagot maya-maya. Kaya't makinig, manood na at matuto kay Maestro Olaso. Oops! Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell para updated kayo sa mga bago kong video. Like, share, and don't skip the ads! And not imagine para lagi tayong happy! Happy, happy lang tayo! At ngayon, simulan na natin ang ating aralin. In this lesson, you will learn to read, interpret, organize data in tabular form and present them in line graph. And use the different kinds of line graphs. We have single to double line graph to present the data. When we say graphs, these are pictures that present data in a way that attracts attention. From a graph, we can easily make comparison about similar situations. Kumbaga, madali mong ma-visualize ang information kapag ito ay nakagraph. Because in our daily lives, we deal with so much information that we need to be organized to see the possible outcome of events. Diba? Sa dami na nangyayari. When we do this, we deal with a specific branch of mathematics, which is statistics. What do we mean by statistics? A statistics is the collection, organization, presentation, interpretation, and analysis of data. Collect means gather information. When we say naman data, it is a set of values used in statistics. When we say naman variables, these are characteristics or properties of people, objects, places, or things. Statistics that are being represented by data. Let's do the first step in constructing a line graph. Okay, that's it. The very first step to do is the collection of data. Siyempre, yun naman ang pinakauna. In collecting the data, we need to remember the following. To collect data on one variable using any source, we can use ito ang mga pwede natin gamitin through observation. Diba? Sa pamagitan ng pag-observe, panonood ng mga news, we can easily identify, we can gather information. We have also through asking questions or instrument a survey questionnaire. Alright. So, sa so pagtatanong, di ba? May mga nagsusurvey din sa inyo. 
We can also have uh, data through listing or gathering data from a source, a reliable source. Siyempre, kailangan reliable. Hindi pwedeng uh, mga fake ang ating pagkukunan. Ano? It should be reliable. And if you have now the data, the next step is we are going to organize the data gathered in a tabular form. Paano ba gawin yun? Wag kang kukura! Ayan. So, the next step is organizing data in tabular form. Let us use the data. For example, we gathered. And, uh, for example, this uh, data gathered by Ms. Gomez. Ayan. We will help her organize her data in tabular form. Paano ba gagawin niya ito? So, let us first read the, uh, ga the, the data information gathered by Ms. Gomez. Ms. Gomez, the advisor of Vibe Honesty, is quite alarmed with the frequent absences and tardiness of her students. No? Ayan. Nangyayari yan, ano? She did a survey on the time. In minutes, students travel to school. This will be conducted to 20 students who are frequently late and or absent in school. Based on the survey results below, ito na yung mga results, ito ang kanyang nakuha. So, what is the longest travel time? What is the shortest travel time? Then, we are going to organize the data in tabular form. Okay? So, ayan na. Ito na yung mga results ng survey ni Ms. Gomez. So, the first step, of course, we need a title. So, we need, syempre, based on the data, the title of this is Trouble Time of 25 Honesty Students. Kasi yun yung kanyang sinurvey. Okay, we will now have the table. Ayan. So, the first column talks about the travel time in minutes. Ayan. So, uh, doon sa data, makikita natin different kinds of minutes. We have 10 and we will arrange that in order. Okay, we have 10, 15, we have also 20, we have also 25. Now, we are going to tally kung ilan ang sumagot ng 10, ilan ang sumagot ng 15, ilan ang sumagot ng 20, ilan ang sumagot ng 25. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with the first uh, response. We have 10. Ayan, ilagay natin sa 10. Next, 15. Ayan. Next, 20. Another 20. Another 20. 15. 20. 25. 15. 20, ayan. Pag 5 na, use diagonal line. Di ba? Parang nagtatali lang kayo ng votes kapag nagkakaroon kayo ng classroom officers voting. Di ba? We have also 15, 20, 15, 25, 20, 20 again, 15, 20, 15, 20. All right. So, we have now, we are done in tallying the results of the survey. Now, let us write the frequency. So, ang sumagot ng 10 ay isa lang. What about 15? We have 5 plus 2. We have 7. And for 20, we have 10 respondents. And also, for 25, we have 2. So, to check kung tama ba yung, kung magtatali ba yung results, you just add the frequency. So, 1 plus 7 equals 8 plus 10 equals 18. Then, we have plus 2. All in all, 20 responses. Okay? So, dapat if ganitong case, ano ang mga advice natin sa ating mga students? So, kung mahaba ang travel time mo, you have to wake up earlier than kung ano man yung time ng pag-wake up mo. Kasi kung, kung anong oras ka nag-wake tapos nalilate ka, dapat mas agahan pa ang pagising para mas maaga kang makakarating sa skwelahan. Okay? So, this time, let's discuss now what is this line graph and how are we going to present the given data. So, after you have written or organized the data in tabular form, you can now construct a line graph. Pero bago yan, ano bang ibig sabihin ng line graph? Okay? A line graph is a graph used to show change over time. So, gagamitin lang natin yung line graph kapag ang ating mga data ay nag-change over time. When we say time, 
what what time can be measured in so alam naman natin yan we already discussed it that it talks about the seconds minutes hours days weeks months years decades centuries etc etc okay so ayan let us now have an example on how to construct a line graph. Pero ano nga ba ang mga dapat nating tandaan when we are constructing a line graph? So, wag nang kukurap. Okay, a line graph always has a title. Katulad kanina sa tabular form, nagsimula tayo sa title. So, ganun din. Kapag mag-construct na tayo ng line graph, we need a title. A line graph has two different axes, no? Ito yung mga dapat tandaan. An axis is either the horizontal line, we call that the x-axis, or the vertical line called the y-axis that form the baselines of a graph. Ano ba yung sinasabi mo, sir? So, example, ito. Yung ating horizontal line, ayan yung linyang pahiga, yan yung tinatawag nating horizontal line, the x-axis. And the vertical line, yung linyang patayo, we call that the y-axis. Huwag kakalimutan, yung pahiga, the x-axis or the horizontal line, horizontal axis, and yung patayo, the y-axis or yung ating vertical axis. Okay, next. We need to consider also the intervals. Okay? What do we mean for that? When we are setting up a line graph, we need to decide what intervals we want to use. Okay, for example, if we are graphing the temperature for a year, isang taon, do we want to put 365 days on the graph and 100 different temperatures? So, sa palagay nyo, magkakasya ba kung ilalagay natin yung 1, 2, 3, hanggang 100, 1, 2, 3, hanggang 365? So, napakahalaga, definitely not napakahalaga na magkaroon tayo ng interval. So, kung 100 yan, maybe we can use by 10. Okay? Ayan. Kung 365, maybe we can use by hundreds para hindi masyadong mahirap. Okay? When we see a horizontal flat line, that means that there was no change during a specific time period. Kapag nag-graph nag na tayo at nakita natin na flat line yung line, walang nagbago, that means we don't need to use the line graph kasi walang nagbago. Wala siyang change during a specific time period. Okay. Another thing. When we are plotting a line graph, it is important also to read what information is on its axis. No? Kailangan meron tayong there must be a label on each axis that describes the information. So, kailangan may nakalagay na label dun sa mga axis para alam ng mga viewers, ng mga readers natin kung ano yung nare-represent nun. Okay? Much like a bar graph, we look at the x-axis first in order to plot our points. Dun tayo sa x kapag bar graph. Pero kapag line graph, dun tayo maglalagay ng mga points sa y-axis. So, ito yung example ng label, no? Ito yung label natin sa uh, x-axis, time in minutes, and we have also the label, the rate per minute, kung saan dito natin ilalagay yung mga numbers, kung saan mag-iisip tayo ng tamang intervals. Okay? So, let us use this example in constructing a line graph. So, we have now the data, Organized na siya in tabular form. So, we have the data all about Anna's daily savings. Ayan. So, on Monday, ayan yung mga savings niya up to Friday. So, let's start constructing line graph. Starting with the title. Kung ano yung title minsan sa data, yun na rin yung magiging title natin. Okay? So, also, we will have Anna's daily savings. Okay. Kung walang title sa iyong data, you have to think na mas malapit dun sa ginagawa or sa result or sa information na ginagawan mo ng line graph. Okay, now let us construct a, uh, a graph okay, using a table or maybe a, a grid. Ayan. So, ayan, magagawa na tayo ng grid. Then after that, we will now consider the x-axis. Ito yon. We will write now the first column 
yung ating first column, doon natin ilalagay sa x-axis. So, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So, lagyan din natin ng label. Ano ba yung nare-represent ng x-axis na ito? It talks about kinds of day. No? So, we have Monday to Friday. And also, the second column represents the y-axis. So, ilagay din natin. So, we have 20 as the lowest and we have the highest 50. What do you think is the best interval? Okay? Mm -hmm. We can use by 10s or maybe we can also use by 5. Ayan. So, we have 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. Now, let us use also the label. What does it represent? This y-axis represents 4 the amount of savings in peso. Ayan. Yan yung amount of savings in peso. Okay. Now, are you ready to plot now the result? Okay. Let's start. On Monday, according to our data, siya ay nakapag-save ng 20 peso. So, lagyan natin ng point muna. Ayan. 20. This, on Tuesday, we have 30. Ayan. Wednesday, ilagay natin muna ha. We have 35. I-plot muna natin. Then, we have Thursday, 40. Hahanapin mo lang po. Ayan. Tapos, itatapat mo lang doon sa, sa amount. Then, we have Friday, 50. Ito yung Friday. Ilagay mo doon sa taas. Sa tapat ng 50. Ayan. Then, the last step now is to connect now the line. Since we are talking about line graph, so we will use definitely a line. Connect natin from the first point up to the last point. Ayan. Okay. So, that's it. We have now a single line graph. Okay? Maya-maya naman, ating bibigyan ng halimbawa ang double line graph. So, ayan. We have now a line graph. So, let us answer now and interpret the data presented in a line graph. So, let's start with our first question. Kung talagang uh, alam na alam mo na at nakikita mo or very uh, clear yung ating ginawang line graph. First one is, what is the title of the graph? Yes, correct. It was Anna's Daily Savings. Now, let's proceed to the second question. What information is on the horizontal axis? Anong information or label ba ang ginamit? Yes, it's the day. Okay, so different kinds of days. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Then, also the third question is, what information is on the vertical axis? Saan yung vertical? Ayan. So, the label is talks about the amount of savings in peso. And for the last question, we have, ayan, ulitin natin, ayan, yung constructing of line graph. And our last question is, what does the line graph tell about Anna's savings? So based on the graph, what can you say about the data? Or what can you say about, uh, what does it tell about Anna's savings. Ano bang napapansin nyo? Tumataas ba? Yung trend ba ay tumataas? Or bumaba pa? Yes! Okay? We can say now that Anna's savings has an increasing trend. Diba? Tumataas siya. Which means, she has a higher chance to save more money. So, tumataas yung kanyang savings. So, ibig sabihin nun, ipinapakita na maaaring magkaroon siya ng maraming ipon. Because, yung trend ng kanyang line graph ay tumataas, increasing. So, that's how we interpret the data presented in a line graph. This time, we are going to have an example of double line graph. Ayan. So, let us use same data, but this time, lalagyan natin o dadagdagan natin ng isa pa. So, ang ating data is all about Anna and Leia's daily savings. So, si Anna nakita natin kanina, ayan yung savings natin. Si Leia naman daw ay meron ding na save. So, meron siyang 10, 25, and so on. So, Step by step, again, parehas lang. We will start with the title. We have now the new title, Anna and Leia's Daily Savings. Step two, let us use the grid. 
Then, step number 3, iput na natin ang ating, lagyan natin ng label yung ating x-axis, ito po sa baba. So, may pagbabago ba yung ating first column, yun din ang ilalagay natin. Ayan. Then, lagyan natin ng label, ayan. Let's talk about the day. And, yung ating second column at saka third column, talks about naman the y-axis. So, same pa rin naman. Talks about the amount of savings in peso. Okay. Let's construct again. Same lang yung ginawa natin kanina kay Ana. Ayan. Ulitin lang natin kay Ana. Ayan. Let's plot the points first. Then, connect it with a line. Ayan. Uh, this time, let's plot naman yung kay Leia. Monday, 10 pesos. So, dito tayo sa Monday. Lagyan natin ng point ang Monday. Tuesday, 25. Nandito yung 25. Ayan. Tapos, ayan, Wednesday, lagay natin, ato yung 35. Thursday naman, we have 35. 35 din. Then, Friday also, we have 40. And now, let us connect the points with the line. Ayan. So, we have now. So, this is an example now of the double line graph. So, what does it mean? The graph is double line graph. It shows a comparison of two sets of data using lines as they change in amount and direction over a period of time. So, the graph shows two variables na ang ating ginamit. We have Anna's daily savings and Leia's daily savings. So, just be aware ha, dahil dalawa na yung linya ang ating ginamit, let us use a legend. Ayan, yung nasa gilid, ayan, lalagyan natin ng legend. Bakit kailangan nating uh, lagyan ng legend? So, yung kulay blue, sky blue, represents Anna's savings and the kulay purple is for Leia's savings. So, bakit kailangan ng legend? Para yung ating readers ay hindi malilito alam kung ano yung nire-represent ng dalawang linya na yan. So, itong linya pala ito ay para kay Ana. Ito namang linyang ito ay para kay Leia. So, let's answer now some questions related to this graph. Okay? So, first one, again, what is the title of the graph? It's very easy. It's Ana and Leia's daily savings. Let's proceed. The second question is, what does the scale in the y-axis represent? Sige nga, alin dyan yung y-axis? Yes, it's talk about the amount of savings in peso. Number three, what about in which day was Anna and Leia saved the same amount? Balikan natin yung graph. Saan daw nagkapareho yung kanilang uh, amount? Yes, it was on... Wednesday, in Wednesday, they have the same amount of 35 pesos. Okay? Number four, the question now is, what is the difference between their expenses on Friday? Ayan. So, ano daw yung pagkakaiba? So, let's go back to the line graph. So, we have Anna save 50 pesos on in Friday while Leia save 40 pesos. So, what's the difference? Just simply subtract 50 minus 40 equals 10 pesos. Okay? And the last question is, who has higher savings between the two? So, kitang-kita naman, no? Based on the line graphs, no? Double line graphs, kitang-kita natin kung sino ang mas mataas ang savings. It was, Anna has more savings than Leia. Okay, so that's how we interpret line graph using the data presented, okay, in tabular form. So, I think we are done with our topic for quarter four, week number five. And this time, to test if you really learned in our lesson for this week, get ready and say, ma. Alright, calling of you. 
grade 5 learners, please type or comment your answers in the comment section of this episode. Just type your complete name, the name and location of your school, and your answer. At bawal ang edited ha, kailangan kapag pinost mo na yun na yung iyong final answer. I have only five items to answer. You can pause the question if you want to read and understand it over and over again. Are you ready? Let's do Mathraigan! Yeah, that's the title, huh? Alright, number one. What is the title of the graph? Is it A, month, B, temperature, C, average monthly temperatures, D, average temperatures in Baguio City? Number two, what was the difference in the average temperature for April and May in Metro Manila? Is it A, 3 degrees Celsius, B, 5 degrees Celsius, C, 10 degrees Celsius, D, 15 degrees Celsius? Number 3. What was the coldest temperature in Baguio City? Is it A. 5 degrees Celsius B. 10 degrees Celsius C. 15 degrees Celsius D. 20 degrees Celsius Number 4. In what month was the coldest temperature in Metro Manila? Is it A. May B. June C. January D. February Alright! Number 5 What does the graph show about the temperature in Metro Manila compared to that Baguio City? Is it A. They have the same temperature B. Both the temperatures are increasing C. The temperature in Metro Manila is higher than in Baguio City D. The temperature in Metro Manila is colder than in Baguio City so I think you have now your answer. Kindly comment it now. Bawal ang edited. And abangan, baka kayo ang ating maging mathinic of the week sa susunod nating episode. And before we finally end, I would like to present to you our mathinics of the week. Ang ating first kauna-unahang napakabilis na sumagot, hindi rin edited ang sagot niya from Tagig Integrated School, Santa Ana, Tagig City, Randolph Devin G. Onza. Ang ating second Matinig of the Week, nagmula naman sa Hulu, Integrated School, Mandaluyong City, walang iba kundi si Neil Danger D. Bernal Ang ating third na pinakamabilis na Matinik of the Week ay syempre ang ating uh, suking-suki na from Pembo Elementary School Prince William C. Perez Ang ating fourth Matinik of the Week nagmula naman sa EM's Signal Village Elementary School, Tagig City. Ayan, mga taga-tagig, sobrang thankful po ako sa inyo. Julian Kate Aris. At ang ating fifth Mathinic of the Week, nagmula naman sa General Vicente Lim Elementary School, Rojas Street, Magsaysay Village, Tondo, Manila. Congratulations to Mark Clarence DL Awayan. Ayan, again, 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 thank you to all of you and congratulations din sa iba pang naka-perfect ng ating matray nga. Again, keep up your good attitude. Remember that the best way to learn is to apply what you have learned. And if you get a mistake, do not worry. That is another way of learning. Again, 
shout out po sa inyong lahat na sumusuporta at walang sawang nag-aabang ng aking mga episode. Maraming maraming salamat po mula sa aking puso, sa inyong mga magulang, mga kaguro at mga mag-aaral mula Luzon hanggang sa Mindanao. God bless po and that concludes our episode for the fourth quarter week number five. Again, maraming 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 salamat po. See you in the next episode. Happy learning!